90s nostalgia, and R.L. Stein property mixed with a writer who has a string of canceled TV shows. Okay. She was so sexy, but so crazy. Normal bitches don't bleed black blood. How do we not die? I'm looking at you, witch nerd. You can't stop it. Fear Street 1994 is a teen horror film based on the R.L. Stein book of the same name. Fear Street is a three-part series that follows characters as they take on an evil force that has plagued their town for centuries. This story follows Dina Johnson, Kate, and Simon, whose prank against a rival town causes an accident that unleashes an evil witch with a thirst for blood and vengeance. This is the best and most accurate synopsis I can give you. Most of the synopsis on this film give a general overall description on what the three-part series is about, but not the individual stories. Now, I'm not here to totally crap on this movie, even though some of you out there love when I tear into movies. This movie has a lot of potential, but there are just a few things the showrunner and producers could do to make it better. I'm a filmmaker and I know how hard it is to create things and how collaborating with others creates unforeseen changes to your story and sometimes the overall project. Hey, but before we jump into the review, Groove.com has an awesome deal to catch you up on all the previous Purge movies before you dive into the new Purge Forever that came out the July 4th weekend. If you love horror, gore, and a little bit of politics, watching this series is a no-brainer. Get the five movie collection for $32.99 on DVD and $42.99 on Blu-ray. Check out the link in the description down below. Now, back to the review. So the first thing that I heard that was tap dancing on my nerves were the music cues. They were really on the nose and trying really hard to make you feel that 90s nostalgia. Instead of feeling nostalgia, I was just disturbed by it. Kind of like how I felt when I was watching that Captain Marvel movie. If you can squeeze Nine Inch Nails Closer, Bush's Machine Head, Garbage I'm Only Happy When It Rains, Roberta Flack Killing Me Softly, Radiohead Creep, and Cypress Hill Insane in the Membrane in the first 10 minutes of the film, you're doing it wrong. And besides, it's a nice chunk of the soundtrack machine gunned off pretty early in the film. Yeah, these are all bops from my youth, but movie, you're beating me over the head with them. Speaking of nostalgia, check out the Walda's book reference here and the knockoff Spencer store here. Mall Rats was mentioned, which is a reference to the 1995 movie of the same name by Kevin Smith. And here is our Scream Mask reference to the movie that came out in 1996. Also, there was a new story-esque exposition about the town of Shadyside, which kept comparing them to the rival town Sunnyvale. The most interesting thing about the towns is that Sunnyvale, for some reason, was a happy-go-lucky and murder-free town, but Shadyside was riddled with murderous people and mayhem. As a writer, I found that part of the story super juicy and I wanted to know why. My thought was maybe Sunnyvale was supplying murderers or maybe they sentenced their prisoners to life in Shadyside or maybe Sunnyvale made some kind of unholy bargain to keep evil locked into one area. I was so let down when this wasn't even explored or mentioned anymore in the story. What a bummer. Also, it appears that Shadyside is embracing their dark past by letting their high school mascot be the witches. But Sunnyvale is supposed to be the goody two-shoes town, but why is their high school team going by the devils? See, now I really feel like either they cut out something or there's something more to it. After that, the story is pretty simple and straightforward. They disturb a vengeful witch's grave and now she's hunting them down. It's up to the characters to figure out what's going on and how to stop the witch from getting the job done. Now, I'm going into some things in the story that might venture into spoiler territory. So I'm warning you now, go watch the movie and come back to this part. I made chapters in this particular review so you can skip right to it if you do, but if you don't care, let's just keep it moving. Okay, this didn't bother me so much, but I said it Tuesday on my Instagram page, but I'll say it again. The lead, Dina Johnson, AKA Kiana Madeira, looks or reminds me of Eliza Dushku, and I couldn't unsee it once I saw it. If you're not following me on the Movie Complex channel Instagram page, you should be. Like, follow, and join the Movie Complex community. 
Now, the group sex scene bothered the hell out of me. Not that they all had sex together, but Simon, while changing clothes, couldn't help being a complete narcissist by kissing his arm and couldn't help topping himself off in the bathroom. Now, given the circumstances that he's currently in, that would be the last thing on my mind. Besides that, Josh is designated as the nerd of the film by verbal title from Simon and his sister from knowing way too much about the town's history. His crush Kate decides not to smash her boyfriend Simon, but to give it up to Josh instead because I have no idea why. Does she not remember that Josh is her best friend's little brother? Then afterwards, Simon finds out about it and is totally cool with it. Is that not weird or what? Then after that, Simon and Josh were instant, almost kind of like brothers. Weird. They're connected by yoni germs. Gross. And yo, what's up with the killer slashing women in the stomach area and not the throat? Do they not know you can live from a stomach wound? Unless, of course, you disembowel them. The characters do figure out a way out of this mess, and it involves killing a character and bringing them back. None of the teenagers have medical expertise and decided to do it themselves. I was like, what the hell? Why didn't the writers just leave Nurse Betty alive so she can assist them? They had access to an ambulance also. Why didn't they just do a Flatliners, which is a 1990 film where characters gave themselves near-death experiences and then brought the friends back with a defibrillator? Like, I get the writers didn't want that to be the real solution because they had a twist in mind, but that would have been more believable. But all in all, this movie is like a 90s slasher film with a witch twist. This series has a lot of potential and I feel like if they tweak a few things, this could really grow into a fan classic. I'm looking forward to Fear Street 1978. It looks way more interesting and scary and I'm a big fan of 70s horror films. I hope they can get the feedback from some of these fan reviews and tone down the on the nose music cues. That being said, I give Fear Street 1994 a 6 out of 10. It's a little fun, not that scary, but a good start to a series with some potential.